of the family of God. Uh, brethren, sometimes we have rough issues. But I thank God for the love in the family of God. You know, uh, over the past week, one of our sisters, Sister Marcia, she, you know, she called me and she had an issue that she was concerned about. And we prayed about it. Amen? And we trusted God to work things out. And um, on the day of the issue, um, I called her again. Amen? Amen? To support her. And I know she's here to celebrate and to say hallelujah. <laughs> because God delivers again. Are you with me? Lord, I say Sister Basilia is here today. Though she has passed through the valley of the shadow of death. Hallelujah! She's standing and trusting God for the peace that passes all understanding. Some of you might have been going through hard times and pastors say, you say, pastor, you don't know my story. Maybe I don't. But I thank God and I say hallelujah. For what he has done, what he's doing now, and what he will do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord gave me a word. He says, preach about an opportunity. Preach about an opportunity. Which is a call for action. Amen. My topic today is an opportunity. A call for action. You, you have to pray for me today. Amen. The Bible says, what is your life? You are a mist that appears for a while. And then vanishes. Then he says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. The word of God says we must make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. All right, stand with me, church. Stand with me. Because you have to preach with me today. But you have to pray for me first. Amen. Stretch that right hand towards the preacher. And the rubber Bahai. Ask God to release the unction. For the function. For God, we are before you right now. And we need to hear what to do. As you present an opportunity to us this morning. So bless me now, my Savior, as I declare your word to your people. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Do you like the writings of William Shakespeare? William Shakespeare wrote a tragedy called Julius Caesar. In the tragedy of Julius Caesar, a man by the name of Brutus, he, as he stood on the verge of a battle, the battle of Philippi, with the ghost of Caesar looking on, seeking revenge. This is what Brutus said. Listen. He said, there is a tide in the affairs of men. Which, when taken at the flood, leads to fortune. Listen, there is a tide in the affairs of men. There is a move, an opportunity that comes in the affairs of men. Which, taken at the flood, when we take it full stream, leads to good fortune. But what happens if we don't take the opportunity. He says, omitted, all the voyages of their lives is bound in shallows and miseries. Sometimes an opportunity comes and we refuse to take it and as a result, our lives are deficient. 
patient as a result of the fact that that opportunity passed. Yes, brothers and sisters, these words are powerful words, although they come from literature. Amen? And what are tides? There is a tide in the affairs of men. What is a tide? It is a wave, right? A wave of the sea, literally. But a tide is also an opportunity. Are you with me? Let's consider the tide that comes from the sea. They say that every tide that comes in is created by the forces of the sun and the moon. They say tides are different. Some are high tides and low tides. But every tide brings water. Every tide brings So, listen to me. Tides don't come permanently. They are temporary. Is every now and then they come. And they come for a purpose. Shall you praise the Lord? And when they come, they are unpredictable. Because we don't know when they are coming. Are you with me, church? But the Bible tells us, there is a tide. That comes to us as God's people. Because God is breaking forth. To bring water. And success in our lives. From glory to glory. From strength to strength. From health to health. From power to power. That is how God wants to bless us. He brings opportunities. In our lives. Shall we praise the Lord. Now. We know what they say about. Missed opportunities. And the devil is very good at trying to make us feel guilty when an opportunity passes, as if to say, no other tide or opportunity can come. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Shall we praise the Lord? But I ask you the question Have you ever been presented with a good opportunity to advance yourself? And you just let it slip through your fingers. And afterwards you say, Amen. How did that pass me? A house was being sold beside me. For a little and nothing. And I could have afforded the house. And now I could, I could have purchased the house. And even if I wish to sell the house now. Man, I would be getting at least a $200,000 profit. And it slipped through my fingers. And every now and then when I remember the house, it hurts me. Huh? But that doesn't mean that there are other houses that I can get. Are you with me? So I am not going to be delayed by the past. I am going to ask God to open my eyes for the opportunities for the present. And the future. Shall you praise the Lord? Because Satan uses our mistakes. And failures. And missed opportunities. As weapons against us. And say you should have done that. You should have done that. You should have done that. But there is therefore now no condemnation. To those who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh. But after the spirit of God. Shall you praise the Lord? So an opportunity. Is a moment. At which. Action must be made. Are you with me, church? An opportunity is a kairos moment that causes certain things to begin. And when that begins, other things begin to happen. An opportunity comes at critical and decisive points in our lives. We must take them. It's a period of time that God calls us to action. It is a season. God has appointed some times in our lives and presented some challenges. And some of us see the opportunities and we say, Lord, I don't want to touch that problem. You need to understand the difference between a problem and an opportunity. Are you with me? Because, not because it might be difficult. That doesn't mean to say it is not an opportunity to advance yourself. Because I don't know what comes easy. Why do you think so many people who have won the lottery become bankrupt thereafter? 
They didn't know what it is to work good money. So that it come, easy come. I want us to look at a few good opportunities in the Bible. And how people use it. And how people throw away some. Are you with me church? You got to preach with me today. Yes. Rahab. You remember her? Yes. That Canaanite woman? She got an opportunity to save the Hebrews who went to spy out the land. An opportunity fell into our hands to save the spies and to save our own family. What did she do? She took it. She grabbed it. And she made them swear that as much as I help you, when you come back, you must help me and my family. Give the Lord some praise. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 31, by faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. She sealed her faith and posterity by taking the opportunity that was given to her. Now, there was a maid. She was the maid of Naaman's wife. Naaman is the captain who had leprosy. And they had a maid in the house. And the maid looked at her master and saw how the leprosy had taken its toll on the master. She was a maid, but she was a Jew, and she knew God. In spite of your station in life, God can use you. And God can open up opportunities for you. Are you with me? She was a maid. She was insignificant. She was actually a slave. In the home of this general. But she saw an opportunity to help her master. To procure her freedom. And she said to the master's wife. If Naaman could go to Jerusalem, to Israel, there is a prophet who could help him. Now, listen to me. Some people know where the good jobs are. But they will not tell you. Because they don't want you to get the good job. They are selfish. But you can only have one job at a time. Uh, it's only in America we see people have all three jobs. <laughs> but I talked to you about that last week. I have a friend... She is a wonderful woman, educated as a nurse in England. She, that was the first ho house I stayed in America. I was living in her basement. She treated me like a son, but she had three jobs. And listen to me, I was paying rent, but I was enjoying the house more than Bernice. She drove a Mercedes Benz and she had three jobs. She didn't have to kill herself like that, you know. But sometimes when you get into the groove of the overtime and the double-double and you don't know when to stop, it can kill you. But I want to tell you, the last time I saw Bernice was in the DMV and it took 10 minutes for her to recognize who I was. Bernice has lost her mind. She finished pay off of the house, pay off of the bends, and she can't even enjoy her retirement. So I'm not telling you to work, not to work and to work and to work. I'm simply saying, use wisdom. Are you with me, church? Oh, Lord, that's not my sermon, but I'm touching somebody here today. Hey, 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 hey!
Hey, let me go back to Bernice one more time. Sometime when she was working these jobs, I was the one who used to have to wake her up. Huh? My wife and I, we used to live there, and we had to wake her up when she was going to the job, you know. Because she came from one job at three and asked us to wake her up eight o'clock to go back on the other one at nine. And then that's how she does it. And she does it on the weekend. So she was doing two permanent jobs and on the weekends. Huh? Do you know how many times I'm at that door banging, banging, banging Bernie's door and she can't wake up? And she's inside here? Because she did that double and a double. And her body can't move. Huh? She slept through her alarm. All right, brethren. So we want to live good and we want to bite the apple. But use wisdom. Yes. Are you with me? Some of you have not taken your vacation in years. What? I work for my summers. <laughs> Why do you think I'm in teaching? <laughs> Don't tell them that, sister, if you're going on, on um, a job interview. You know, one lady went for a job interview as a teacher, and they said, Why do you want, why did you enter the profession? She said, I love children. And I love to help people. And what more? And what I love the most is that I have three, um, I have all the summer to do nothing. She didn't get the job. <laughs> but it is true. I'm talking about opportunities. Can I, can I go back to it? And I am saying to you, not because you might be a helper or a nanny, not because you might be CNA or whatever, and you might not be on the upper echelons of some, what some people think is great profession. Trust me, God can use you and give you some dynamic opportunities that advance you, that make you look bigger than some people with degrees. I was just talking to, with my friend Brother Orrit this morning. And I was saying to him the same thing. I said, man, he has a million dollar house in Jamaica. Some people with degrees don't have that. Huh? It's finished now, you know. I'm ready to go down there just for a little time. Come on, give the Lord some praise, Lord. Woo! Yes, man. Yes. Use wisdom. And take the opportunities that God presents you. Don't be scared now. Because, listen to me. God has not given you the spirit of fear. You know, sometimes somebody says, you know, I want to start a little business, but I'm so fearful. How are you going to move? Huh? Pray and fast about it. And if God, if God gives you the freedom, then move. Are you with me, church? Oh, God. So, the maid saw that there was a prophet who could help Naaman. Second Kings chapter 5. And... She introduced her master to her prophet. And Naaman was healed. Are you with me? He had a little pride. Amen. He was told, go and dip yourself seven times. And, and he, he began to curse. He said, I have better rivers. This dirty Jordan. But somebody said, if the, the prophet had told you to do something great, wouldn't you do it? He told you to do something simple. Go. And Naaman went and he dipped himself one, two, three, four, five times and nothing happened. I suppose he said to himself, might as well, I, I just finish it. <laughs> just two more to go. And he dipped twice and he went down seven times. And the Bible says his leprosy was cleansed. Give the Lord some praise. The walls of Jerusalem were broken down. Nobody cared. And Nehemiah was in Babylon serving wine to the king. And he heard that the walls of Jerusalem need to be broken, need to be built up. That they were broken down. He saw an opportunity to help his people. But listen, Naaman was in paradise. He did not have to care. But he saw an opportunity 
to help the people of God. And he did. He went to the king and asked for permission. And not only did he get permission, he got resources to go to build the walls. And the walls were built, although they were adversaries. St. Balat and Tobias came to prevent the building of the wall, laughing at them, saying even if a fox were to jump up on this wall, it would break it down. But they continued. Listen to me. When God put in your hands some opportunities, some people will laugh at it. You will have adversaries. But I tell you the secret. Sometimes they will discourage you because they don't want it to work for you. So you need to know the voice of God. Give the Lord some praise here, church. Hey! Queen Hester. Come with me now, church. Queen Hester, she was queen. And she heard of a plot to destroy the Jews. She was queen already. So she could say to herself, I am queen, so I am secure. But she saw an opportunity to help the entire Jewish nation. And she said, I'm going to take it. She said, if I live, I live. And if I die, I am going into the king. He has not sent for me. But I'm going to take this opportunity to make a difference. She went in. And the Bible said in those days that the king does not set forth his scepter to you. Wife or no wife, you are dead. But she said, this is my moment. There is a tide in the affairs of men. And I must take it now. Or else my people will be destroyed. And when the king saw her, God put grace in his heart. And he received her. She saved the nation from annihilation. She didn't say because I'm, king, I'm queen, I don't have to help. I hear some people say, you know, I don't have to help there. I don't have to help there. When God places an opportunity in your hands, we should take it. Shall you praise the Lord? Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. Hello? Go to that scripture. Daniel chapter 2. <clears throat> the king had a dream. And nobody could interpret the dream. Glory to God. An opportunity was opened up. For Daniel to come out of the den. Are you with me? Yes. Daniel chapter 2. Verse 10. The astrologers answer the king. There is no one on earth who can do what the king asks. No king, however great and mighty has ever asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or astrologer. What the king asks is too difficult. They can't interpret the dream. They say it is too difficult. Hey, it might be too difficult for them, but not for you. Because God is a revealer of things. Amen? He said no one can reveal it to the king except the gods. <laughs> and they do not live among humans. Well, God can reveal it to you and to me. Amen? Amen? Verse 12. This made the king so angry and furious that he ordered the execution of all the wise men of Babylon. So the decree was issued to put the wise men to death and men were sent to look for Daniel and his friends to put them, into, to, to, put them to death too because they were considered a part of the wise men of Babylon. So... Here comes an opportunity for the man of God to seek God so that God may arise and the enemies be scattered. Hmm? 
All right. So they told Daniel. Look at verse 19. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. <laughs> they said nobody would know. But it was revealed to him as he sought the Lord. Amen? Praise Jesus. So, what was the result? Look at verse 46. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel. Look here. When you say a king bow before a man, you know that's a great honor. Are you with me? The Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor and order that all that an offering and incense be presented to him. The king said to Daniel, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries. For you were able to reveal this mystery. You know what? Daniel could just sit back and say, You know what? Let the king do whatever he wants to do. I am in captivity already. You know, I'm in jail already. So what? But he sought the Lord. And we are going to see how God is going to elevate him. He took the opportunity to seek God and ask God for the result. And God is now going to honor him. Shall we praise the Lord? We met two people before. A few weeks ago in one of my sermons. Priscilla and Aquila. Amen? Acts chapter 18. They heard a man spoke eloquently. He was full of spirit, but he didn't have much substance. What is his name? Apollos. Eh? They didn't criticize the preacher. They took him aside and taught him the way of the Lord more perfectly. And he humbled himself and took the instruction and he became a better man because he became a great missionary into Achaia. In fact, the scripture that was read today from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, Paul is saying, I need a palace to help me here. Are you in me, church? Listen. Priscilla and Aquila were sitting in the church, just like you. And they heard a preacher. The preacher was preaching strong, full of spirit. But he didn't have much content. The substance was weak. They could have preached better than Apollos. Or maybe they would have more substance than Apollos. But they didn't criticize him. Hello? After the service, they took him aside and taught him better. They took the opportunity that was given to them to help this young man to be a better young man. And listen to me, church people. If you are not like that, then you don't belong here. You must be like a Priscilla and Aquila, willing to take people aside, not embarrass them openly, aside, and teach them the way of God more perfectly and help them to rise up to become who they need to be. We don't condemn people. We don't put people down. We help people and elevate people. And we do it privately. Amen? From pastor right down. Give the Lord some praise. Come on. So many people have been hurt by the church. Because we don't do it right. We need to do it right. In Jesus name. Now, I want to share with you one last one as I close. The man's name is Felix. Turn to this final scripture today. Acts chapter 24. I will finish the sermon next week. Acts chapter 24. And verse 24. This is the final scripture for today. I want you to read this one carefully with me. Let us see how this man is going to take 
the opportunity that is presented to him. And after certain days, are you there with me? And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, Paul talking now, what was his topic? Righteousness, temperance, and the judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way from this time. Get out of here. <laughs> when I have a more convenient season, I will call for thee. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might lose him. Wherefore, he sent for him the oftener and communed with him. He thought Paul was going to give him money to be freed. Paul was just glad for the opportunity to preach another sermon to him. <laughs> Look at how the man behaved when he heard the gospel. He ran away the preacher. He ran away the preacher. And now my friends, the Bible says the spirit of God do not strive with man always. Sometimes the spirit of God comes and convicts you. And you feel the strong conviction of the Holy Ghost, right? And sometimes you don't feel it. The spirit of God does not strive with man all the time. And that's why those of you who have a desire to, to be baptized... You know, God, has, God is striving with you now and encouraging you, your heart. Don't turn him away because, you know what, you may not have the desire ever again. I have seen many people who turn their backs on God and never feel the desire for him ever again. They come to a place where they cannot repent again. A place of no repentance. Listen. The people of Noah's day had a chance to go into the ark. They refused and they were drowned. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah had a chance to repent. They refused and they were burned to ashes. The two thieves on the cross both had an opportunity to be saved. And only one asked Jesus for mercy and favor. And he got it. We don't know the story of the other one. In the story of the prodigal son, God gave the prodigal son a second chance. This is the word of the Lord to you today. God is saying, an opportunity is open to you. From the scripture that was read this morning, God said, behold, a door of opportunity is open to you. Opportunity to, to be saved. Opportunity to do the works of God. Opportunities to do the will of the Lord. Shall you praise the Lord?